Stefan Lehner here is an, is an artist, and he will show some things for us here. And we will, then we will have even more questions to be asked afterwards. Thank you for the invitation, and thank you to Robert. He gave me some, I explained what I wanted to do, and he agreed that it could fit. So I wanted to show uh, a little bit of my work. I'm a designer, and, but I work only with trash, only with garbage. And I do it since 30 years, so it's a quite hard job. But uh, it's also very nice. The challenge is very big. And I call this what I'm doing is upcycling. I wanted to first to, to show a little bit what I did, and then to show one special project where I integrated or I was inspired by some shapes of Feynman. So, uh, let me just start with some, okay, so this is what I want to do, what is upcycling, inspiration by Feynman, some steps, technique and demonstration, perhaps we will do a demonstration with this boiling water. So, what is upcycling? This is an example of upcycling. We have these old plastic bottles and they became a sandal. So this was, is something which is necessary in some very poor countries. But it's a helpful. You see uh, what can happen in some countries, not only in these countries, also in our Western uh, world. We have huge mountains of garbage. Uh, I found a beautiful example of upcycling in Brazil. This is made by very small, all these little pieces are caps from lemonades and beers. Mm -hmm. And it's made, it, there are hundreds, and it's a beautiful object, and it's even something, a bag, very useful bag. So it's a, a very nice example of upcycling. This is also an example. This I will show you. This is an object I did for my wife. She was quite happy. And uh, it, these are four, six plastic bottles, and I will show how I did. And if it's working with this water, I can really show you how I can do it. So first I worked with materials, very industrial materials, uh, which I found very interesting, and which I collected. But then uh, it's not enough to collect, you have to do something with it. So I did a lot of objects first based on the industrial garbage. But for me, the, 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 there are, these are treasures. The first object I did which was not uh, recycling. This was something coming from my studies of mathematics. This is a part, a big part of a hypercube. A hypercube is a cube in four dimension, but a projection of in the three-dimensional world. So it's, you, you can perhaps see that there are two chairs, in one in the other, two sides of the chairs combined. Now another example, um, I recycled light bulbs. So these light bulbs beca are becoming a sort of very, very thin objects, vases, or light objects. And to do this, I had to develop a machine. This is a machine. This machine is a, a just a music player, an old music player. And the speed of this helped me to cut. And if it works, can you show how it does? So 
So are marked with a diamond, a little line, and now by heat, I have it. So I can cut uh, very easily very delicate object, glass object. And what did I do? For example, this kind of, uh, with broken glass and light, then I created this, this kind of lamp. The NEPS object was also one of the first. I still have it. My wife calls it, uh, has some eigenfrequency. So uh, it moves only in, in one sense. And uh, even my mother-in-law was quite happy. I don't know exactly why. <laughs> so next object, this was a mechanical dimer. Here you see the crick of a car, and you can dime the light of a candle which is projected to the, to the ceiling. Another quite crazy project was for, in the 19, in the years 90, uh, the tabac industry had difficulties to make publicity. And they asked me to make a crazy object which was with a can, which was an ashtray. And they were not allowed to go anymore to make simple publicity. So they asked me, make something crazy. We put it in places, and we are sure people will steal it. So it was an object made to be stolen. <laughs> Afterward, I was not so sure if it was good to collaborate for the tabac industry, but I did, and it functioned. There was all stolen. Thousands of these were <laughs> stolen in nice, hip, hip places. Another object, these are bulbs, wrong bulbs from the, from the light bulbs industry. And I did a, a big vase with light projecting the flowers to the ceiling. This I did for a daughter of somebody of Gerard Hoft in, in the Netherlands, and she was marrying, and I made it for her. This was another uh, project for a recycling house. Uh, this, perhaps you recognize, these are the strings of a folding umbrella. So this lamp, you can fold it also inside and outside. It's like uh, insect legs. This was for my daughter, she's now nearly 30. This is from a supermarket car. She liked it very much. This was a recent trial to make pet bottles very strong. And they are not very strong, but if they are all under high pressure, air pressure, so it's really incredible light, incredibly light, and incredibly strong. But the project is not yet finished. <laughs> Another big project was for a museum. We built up with a lot of students and people and children a huge uh, Christmas crash. So it was more a constructive way to use plastic bottles like here to make a dome. So these are some examples. Now to Feynman and when we were speaking with Frank and Betsy, Frank told me that one small object was also an object that Feynman was studying called hexaflexagon. You know it probably from school. So this is the shape I used then to cut my plastic bottles. You can see here, this is a normal plastic bottle where, where I put marks on these shapes. I don't know if this is working. I have to put it on, perhaps. But perhaps you can see this hexagonal structure here, which is repeated on the whole bottle. Why? You can see uh, I cut it more. I cut it a part of the structure, and I put a balloon in. You will understand why a balloon. So, if I blow up, blow up. So this happens if I heat it. And that I will try to show you with this pen afterward. If I heat it, I 
got a new object, this kind of bottles. And if I put a light inside, I can again, first I have a flat bottle, I cut it, I blow it up, and then I can, with the light, project it again on a two-dimensional wall. And this is the effect. So here I started with this kind of structures. I cut it in paper, and then I can put it on the pressure. It's like this, and it will open. And this is very magic, how it will open, and it changes completely form. You can see this kind of shapes projected. This one, another one. This is a white one, another shape. So here I can show what, how I do when I, found, when I find a shape, a cutting, then I have developed a laser printer, a laser cutter, uh, and the laser cutter can do it much more precise. You can see the film, how it goes. Here. And the motor is exactly programmed that the motor turns, turns the, the bottle. Oh. And now, if everything is working, we will try to do the process when I have this bottle, and I can show you how they look like. So this, for example, is a bottle with a classical shape, which, which I used in the beginning. And if you can, you can see here, this is now cut it by a laser, by this laser you saw before. So if I put the balloon inside, you see that it's changing shape. And now if I put it in water, it will keep the form. Because if now I put water up, the, the air out, then you have just, again, the shape, as before. So it didn't change at all. But with the water, and now it's a big challenge to see, can we put the pan uh, here and look if it, if it boils, then I can try. I can you show also other ones. So here I have a lot of more bottles which already are Cut, prepared. The balloon inside. Sometimes the balloon is exploding. So here you can see uh, one of my first objects. Here you have also with this Feynman diagram inside. This is already blown, blown up. The same as here. And I will show you also then the effect if I put light. You can you can give it a round. You can't break it. Huh? Don't be don't be afraid. This one you can give. Yeah. Up. That's enough. So, yeah, that looks good. Can we do more water inside as as to the top? So I will try this one, what, what happens. 
So don't be afraid, can explode, but it's not very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so now, because the structure is stronger than what you saw before, so it will take a little bit more time, but let's see. And now, if I put the water out, it stays like this. And I can even go further, make more under pressure. And uh, I will try to go much more on with other shapes and to look what the end result is then the projection. This is an object, okay, it's just a fun object, but it can in it can become also a real lamp. So I have here an installation. I can just take one of these finished, for example, the brown one. Can I have it just? I will just make a little demonstration what happens if I put the light inside. So you can see this, this happens. Now we don't have, we have still a quite a uh, lot of light, but it can be very strong if you are in the dark and you can shape it, you can, the light, yeah, it's, I think it's difficult to put it out. Yeah, it's a little bit like this. So here you can have a one, one example. So it's completely different from a, from a bottle, you agree? So, and here I have a very simple, a very simple tool to fix it in, in a space, to have it on a, on a little standard, a very simple, low-tech standard. So, I'm nearly, nearly finished. So here are some of the results, if you put them together. And this is a, an object in a castle. So trash can even arrive in a castle. <laughs> and this is an object with a double, so two glued bottles together to what you can do. So question is, yeah, what now? I will insist on researching on this, and I think mathematical or physical uh, simulation is very interesting and very surprising. Uh, I think one could go much further in industry to do systematic reuse, that means upcycling, that we can use our trash a second time, and not only recycle the basic materials, but really go from one product, which became trash, to a next level. So this is normally goes under reuse or, the, or upcycling. I could also imagine that industry one, one day could produce things where a second use is already planned in. And they could help to make reuse to everybody or to industry. What interested me is to see how far and how industrial we can do what I'm doing now by hand, also by laser. Thank you very much to <laughs> give me some...